Hello everyone, this is Vincent Torre Bongolan and in today's video, I'm going to discuss how to calculate a sample size. But before that, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Vincent Torre Bongolan, a data scientist by profession with more than 18 years of experience in technology and analytics. I am currently working for TDCX Philippines as a Senior Business Insights Manager too. And at the same time, I am also teaching at the La Salle College of St. Benilde, specifically at the School of Management and Information Technology. I also wrote a program course for the School of Professional and Continuing Education, also at De La Salle College of St. Benilde. I am also a book author on research and statistics, and at the same time, a contributing author on different e-learning platforms such as Udemy, Manning.com, LearnDesk, etc. I am also a freelance statistician and data science consultant at Upwork.com. Alright, so before we dig deeper into the sample size calculation, I would like to request everyone to please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the notification bell for you to be notified every time I upload videos. And this is very important guys, don't forget to put all your questions in the comment section and I will try my very best to answer all of these questions. Alright, so thank you very much and here you go. Oh, <laughs> na. Hello everyone, so I am here now at my uh, condominium unit in uh, Cubao and uh, I would like to do a quick demo of the uh, Internet of Things and the uh, AI uh, application that is uh, developed for uh, my condominium unit. What is Digital Week? The Digital Week 2019 is an ADD annual event Alright, so in this video, I will no longer be discussing the difference between a census and a survey, as well as the probability and non-probability sampling technique. Alright, so to start with, you will be encountering different formulas and terminologies or requirements, such as the sample size, of course, the confidence coefficient, the proportion, the margin of error, the confidence level. Alright, so don't forget that these are the main requirements in order for us to calculate the required sample size using the Cochrane sample size estimation formula. Okay, so please do note that substituting the given data to the formula is not something as you know directly mentioned in the problem so sometimes the problem may just tell you to calculate the sample size using confidence level and you will end up by asking yourself what is the confidence coefficient or what is the z value Okay, what is the Z value if the given data that we have is the confidence level? So all we need to do is to convert or to get the corresponding Z score of a confidence level. Okay, so we need to calculate first the Z score okay, of the corresponding confidence level okay so but what is confidence level 
The confidence level is the percentage of times you expect to get close the sum estimate. The same estimate if you run your experiment again or resample the population in the same way. Again, a confidence level is the percentage of times you expect to get close to the same estimate if you run your experiment again or resample the population in the same way. Okay? So, ito daw yung percentage o bilang na kung saan yung estimate mo ay close o malapit doon sa bawat experiment na gagawin mo. How confident you are. Okay? The margin of error tells us how many percentage points your results will differ from the population value. Okay? So, yung margin of error daw ay percentage na kung saan gaano kalayo yung estimate mo doon sa totoong value ng population. Okay, so halimbawa, nagpredik ka na 95% ng tao sa mundo ay may IQ na 100. So, gusto mong malaman kung yung calculation mo na ang IQ ay 100 ay close doon sa totoong IQ ng karamihan. That's margin of error. The proportion can also express as a percentage indicates your estimated results and is calculated using a quick feedback or previous survey results. So, from the word proportion. So, ibig sabihin, galing siya sa previous data kung meron. Okay? So, don't forget this requirements. Okay. So, there are questions na sabi ko nga the given data is a confidence level. And you need to get first the corresponding Z-score of this or, or its of the confidence level. Let's say a confidence level of 80% is equivalent to Z-score of 1.282. A confidence level of 90% is equivalent to Z-score of 1.654. A confidence level of 95% is equivalent to 1.960, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, like I said, no, given data sometimes are giving you the confidence level. So, you need to get or you need to calculate the Z-score. Okay, although there are some uh, data available wherein Z-score was actually mentioned na. Okay? So, however, what if Z-score is not available? So, you have to calculate the, the Z-score. Okay? So, we have said that 95% confidence level is equivalent to one point. 960. So, how do we get this value? Okay. We will be using this formula by determining the areas in the normal distribution. 1 plus the confidence level divided by 2. And 95% is the same as 0 0.95. So, 1 plus 0.95 divided by 2 is 0.975. Okay, so we already identified the areas under the normal curve. Next thing is to look into the Z distribution table or the Z score table. 
Okay, so this is uh, commonly known as the standard normal table. Okay. So first is that we need to remember the values, the areas. So that is 0.9750. Okay, so I'll go back. 0.9750. Okay. So this is the 0.9750. So let's check the Z score where this value underlies. So this is from 1.9 and 0 0.06. So the Z score for the area 0.975 is 1.96. Okay, so this is how the value was computed. Alright. So since we already have the Z-score, we are now ready to substitute the given value. Okay, so the Z-score is 1.96. And then let's squared. And the P or the proportion, if we don't have an idea about the proportion, we can use the rule of thumb, which is 0.5. And the value under the uh, open and close parentheses is 1 minus P, which is 1 minus 0.5. Because P is 0.5. And of course, the margin of error. Okay, so the margin of error is 0 0.05 and then squared. Because the formula is asking us to, to, squared the, to get the squared of the margin of error. So that's why 0 0.05 squared. All right, so we already supply the given data to each of the formula. And uh, the result is 384. So meaning to say the required sample size is 384. But hey, we're not done yet. What is the population. So you notice that to calculate the sample size, we will be uh, we will be using the um, population. So the population is let's say for example two thousand. So how many? is the required sample size if we have the population of 2,000. That's 322. Alright, so you notice guys that uh, we still need to uh, calculate the margin of error. This is not something as, like I said, provided in a given situation. So sometimes we need to calculate the corresponding value for each of the confidence interval. Let's say for example, let us calculate the margin of error based on the confidence level of 95%. So something like that. So in my next video, I will going to discuss how to calculate a margin of error based on the confidence level. Okay, so thank you and have a good day.